Okay. It's, it's going I bad. I do not like to be touched. <laughs> Ugh, that's a touch. Just shut up. I don't like this guy. What's up, Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology TV, where we discover biology in everyday life. I'm excited. Today is a first. We are going to be looking at TV specifically. We're going to be watching uh, one of the most popular episodes of The Good Doctor because, you know, oftentimes when we watch these medical dramas, we miss the biology. Well, you're not missing the biology. I'm going to walk you through it today. This episode is called Trampoline. It starts like one of those jokes. Two men walk into a bar and then let's see what happens. Why are you sad? I'm not sad. Is there another reason to get drunk at 10 in the morning? Shut up. Ooh. Uh-oh. Here we go. Shut up. He's not a nice guy. No. You go, boy. Stand up for yourself. If I have something to say, mm -hmm. I will say it. There you go. If I have someone to shut up, then I'll shut them up. Uh, if I have something to say. Uh, no. Okay, it's, it's I going bad. do not like to be touched. <laughs> uh, that's a touch. Just shut up. I am a surgeon. Ah, oh, come on. Ooh. First of all, wait, just really quick. I really don't like this guy. And it's kind of hard for me to feel sympathetic for him right now, but let's see what happens. Ooh, okay, wait, this looks really bad. That's a lot of blood. And when you see something like that, you're tempted to think, man, things are crazy. But here's the reality. While the brain only makes up about 2% of your body weight, 20% of the blood that leaves your heart goes to the brain because there's a lot of processing happening there. And that takes a lot of oxygen and nutrients. The brain is a very important organ. And then of course you have your eyes, the muscles in your face. There's a lot of stuff going on. Because of that, we have a ton of blood vessels in our head and in our scalp. The other day, my daughter was jumping on the bed. She was one of those monkeys jumping on the bed. And then she fell off and bumped her head. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. We heard a lot of screaming. We ran into the bedroom and it seemed like blood was everywhere. Sometimes even a minor cut in the head can cause a lot of bleeding. In this case, he fell and hit his head, or like we say in St. Martin, he bussy head. And that's why we see a ton of bleeding. Let's continue. I love the music on the intro here. Oh. Mm. Zach Cordell, 31, loss of consciousness, laceration with closed head injury, possible brain contusion. GCS score? Nine, Dr. Murphy thinks it might be an epidural hematoma. Dr. Murphy. Ooh, okay, let's talk about that. The brain, like we said, very important. And because of that, it needs a lot of protection. Around the brain, surrounding the brain, we have three layers of membrane. The inner layer is the pia matter, the middle layer is the arachnoid matter, and the outer layer is the dura matter. That outer layer, the dura matter, is very thick, and it's normally attached directly onto the skull, on the inside of the skull. The word dura comes from Latin and it really means tough, strong, it's like durable. If something is durable, it's very strong. And as I mentioned, it's attached to the skull. Normally there is no space between the dura matter and the skull. That would be the epidural space, but it shouldn't be there in the head. If we have an epidural hematoma, what we have is bleeding in that space. There's some kind of trauma that causes the, the separation of the dura matter and the skull so that there is that epidural space and because there's damage to the vessels, there is pooling of blood in that epidural space, an epidural hematoma. Let's continue watching. CBC is normal. Talk screen is basically clear, no drugs, trace amounts of alcohol. Maybe he tripped and hit his head. No, his gait was erratic, and so was his behavior, both highly suggestive of intoxication. I thought uh -oh. you found him unconscious. Yep, you let it go. That's why you don't lie. It makes it easier. What happened? Did he do something to you? Tell her the truth, man. Say Come something on. to you? If Zach wasn't intoxicated, then he has a neurological issue. You need to run an EEG and a CT angiogram. I have to go. 
All right, so obviously they've done a bunch of tests. They did the uh, CBC and, and a number of other things, tox screens and everything seems to be normal. So they're trying to figure out what is going on. Why did this guy just fall and hit his head? Let's skip ahead. All right, let's see how he treats Dr. Sean now. They're treating you for abdomyolysis. That makes sense. Why are you here? I am a doctor. Yes, he is a surgeon. Oh, this is my favorite part of the show. It's where he starts seeing all the stuff. Everything starts coming to him. It's so awesome. It's not rhabdo. Nope. You need immediate treatment. What? For what? For what? For what? Trampoline. Trampoline. Name of the show. You asked to see me? Yeah, for the last two hours. I'm sorry. I've been dealing with Dr. Murphy. Seems someone beat him up mm -hmm. quite severely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened, but before he passed out, he said he knew what was wrong with me. Okay, so really quick, you notice how he said, yeah, it shouldn't have happened, but before he passed out, like, I don't really care about Dr. Sean, but hey, please, this something's wrong with me. So self-centered, man. Anyhow, let's talk about what's wrong with him. Oh, well, we all know what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You're an with a head trauma and rhabdo. Oh, yep. You said you're wrong. He kind of spaced out, all distracted. Then he said that I don't have that, and then I need treatment. Distracted she, how? She knows what that means. Like, he was looking around trying to find something in the air. I don't know. And then it looked like he found it. What exactly did he say? Trampoline. Trampoline? Yep. And? That's it? You know, Sean, it could be a reference to something he read somewhere. It could be a metaphor. Could be the guy misheard. It could be delirium. Sean had a systolic pressure of 70. He may have been hallucinating. He may have just been wrong. Not wrong. He's hypotensive. O2 sats are dropping. He's crashing. Bag him. All those five units of vasopressin and start a drip. Mm. Trampoline, from the Spanish word trampolino, meaning springboard, from the Italian root trampoli, meaning stilts. Maybe Sean was talking about an excessive growth disorder, like acromegaly. Instead of just saying the name of the disorder, he used the English translation of the Spanish derivative of the Italian. <laughs> Good point. Channeling her inner Sean, you can do it. I believe in you. Oh, this looks like the seed. Ah, uh, there we go. We've got a trampoline, we've got neurons, we've got a brain. Is she gonna get it? Is she gonna get it? Is she gonna get it? We need an OR stat! She got it. She got it! Hey, Sean. It's me, at the M. What are you doing in my room? No, Sean, we're in the hospital. You were pretty bad earlier, but now you... Zach. Zach has the wrong diagnosis. No, no, no. By the way, do you see how what he cares about in this moment is Zach? He's like so the opposite of Zach. That's why I like him. He's awesome. He's cool. Sean, no, I no, know. he'll, it's, it's he'll fine. die it's unless he's fine. treated immediately. Sean, you know, he needs... Trampoline. <laughs> Trampoline. Zach had an aortic arch aneurysm with signs of impending rupture the evidence of which was a pulsatile mass in his neck. That and his erratic gait and behavior are explained by the fact that he had tertiary syphilis, also known as... Treponema. Treponema. Zach misheard you, but we were able to repair the aneurysm and he is stable now. Okay. All right, that is an awesome end to the story. Even though the guy is still a jerk, let me explain what's going on here. Someone goes and they have sex and unfortunately they contract an STD. In this case, it is syphilis. The bacteria that causes syphilis is called treponema pallidum, or for short, we'll call it treponema. When someone gets syphilis, there are four stages that it can go through, primary, secondary to latent, and then all the way to tertiary. Tertiary is the worst. With primary syphilis, we 
usually just have like skin ulcers on the genitals. But when we get all the way to tertiary syphilis, we can have it affecting a whole host of other systems. One of these effects is called an aortic arch aneurysm. Now, when we look at the heart, we have the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. The right side of the heart gets the deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body. It then sends it to the lungs to pick up some oxygen. It comes to the left side of the heart. And then when it leaves the left side of the heart, it goes via the aorta, which arches over, and then it goes to the rest of the body. This is the biggest vessel. It is the main blood vessel coming off the heart, and it is crucial. If anything goes wrong with the aorta, we've got some serious issues. In this case, the bacteria gets into the wall of the aorta. There's an immune response. You have inflammation happening, and that can cause the elastic tissue to die. This is called necrosis. When that happens, you get like a bulge in the wall of the aorta. The problem here is that if that bulge gets big enough and if it ruptures, the blood will escape from the aorta and pool down into the body. And depending on the size of this rupture, it can lead to shock and eventually death within minutes to hours if the problem is not fixed. That's why in this case, they had to do an operation to repair the aorta, an aortic arch aneurysm as a result of tertiary syphilis. And there you have it. That is the biology behind what is happening in this episode with this particular patient. And I hope you enjoyed that. This is a first, but I plan on doing much more because we are discovering biology in everyday life. If you have a TV show, a specific scene, a cartoon or whatever, where there is biology, involved and you would like me to break it down, go ahead and drop that in the comments. Let's keep this interactive because this is interactive biology. My name is Leslie Samuel. Thank you for watching. You can check out this next video because I think you'll like that too. See you next time. Peace.